front page of the Business Courier this week. Can Lafley hit the target? Well, the honeymoon is over for the new and former CEO, A.G. Lafley, one week after he returned to the top job at P&G. As we told you last week, Lafley was brought in May 23rd to replace Bob McDonald, who announced his retirement after three decades with P&G. Investors and apparently the board were not happy with the company's performance. Lafley, who served as chief executive of the consumer goods giant from 2000 to 2009, brings a rock star mentality. Uh, a, a rock star aura to the job, but reputation can only carry him so far. Lafley's charge is to crank up P&G's innovation pipeline, get the right products to the right markets, and groom a successor. Trusted as he may be, Lafley will deal with a tough set of challenges. The day after the shakeup announcement on May 24th, P&G experienced a Lafley bump, if you will, of $3.18, bringing the closing price of the stock to $81.88. But prices were down this week. P&G closed at $78.90 on Wednesday. In his return memo to P&G employees, Lafley said innovation is P&G's lifeblood, but analysts say Lafley needs to engage with his mantra that the consumer comes first. And to achieve the right product combinations, he needs to recognize that the consumer today is quite different around the world than the consumer when he was last CEO. P&G is Cincinnati's flagship firm and the nation's 14th most profitable. At stake in all of this is P&G's future as well as Lafley's own legacy. James Ritchie wrote this story for the Business Courier, joining me now on U.S. Bank Business Watch. James, good to have you with us. Thank you. So what are the challenges that Lafley is facing in his comeback role at P&G? Well, when you come back with his kind of reputation and you're coming back to P&G, the standards are extremely high. You have to think uh, just about a, a month ago, P&G's stock was at a 52-week high, and uh, Bob McDonald uh, still uh, that wasn't a satisfactory performance so um, Lafley doesn't get much runway not much room for errors he's got to get um, revenue up uh, rather quickly I think he is familiar with this pressure I mean he served there as CEO for nine plus years but you know he talks about how innovation is the key let's talk about the importance of innovation at this stage of the game for Procter & Gamble Innovation, uh, at its core, it's getting new things, uh, new things for consumers to buy, new things for them to do uh, into their hands. And that's uh, deceptively hard. Uh, Tide Pods was probably the best example of a, a big innovation for P&G. But that's still not really something new. That's something that you buy uh, instead of something you used to buy from P&G. You uh, might switch from powder or liquid to these uh, single unit uh, pod, uh, pods. So they're looking mainly to develop some new products, completely new products? Uh, right. And um, probably uh, one of the best examples I can think of was Swiffer, you know, the Swiffer. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these things are not hard, uh, not easy to come up with. Now, he's 66 years old. I don't think he needs the money. I could be wrong. But how long do you think he's going to be on the job, and, and how do they groom this next successor? I hear anything from uh, about a year all the way up to four or five years. I think it kind of depends on how the stock's doing. I, I don't think anybody's going to be in a hurry to usher somebody out the door if uh, he's got revenue growing and he's got the stock price up. But I did uh, hear just this morning they're already... Um, he's already starting to uh, think about a reorganization, lining up a few successors, uh, a few promotions, and um, getting a stable of people who might eventually be able to step into the job. So yeah. uh, the consensus seems to be two or three years, maybe. Yeah, if anyone can do it, Lafley can, and I know you'll follow that for us. Thank you, James. Thank you.